Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is As Yesterday's Was and The Next Three Days Shall Be by Percy Shelley. He was one of the major English romantic poets, as I mentioned yesterday, and he lived, well, he lived not very long. He lived from 1792 to 1822, dying in what is now Italy at the age of 29. As I mentioned yesterday, I'm going to be reading one part of his famous poem, Ode to the West Wind, each day this week. Each part is a stanza-length section uh, of 14 lines, three, four line, four, three line stanzas rather, and then a couplet at the end. Yesterday I read part one and with a few comments on the ode. So if you'd like to uh, get some of that context, you can listen to yesterday's episode if you have not done so. But here's part two to Percy Shelley's Ode to the West Wind. Thou on whose stream, mid the steep sky's commotion, Loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed, Shook from the tangled boughs of heaven and ocean, Angels of rain and lightning. There are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge, Like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce minad, Even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height, The locks of the approaching storm. Thou dirge of the dying year, to which this closing night will be the dome of a vast sepulchre, vaulted with all thy congregated might of vapors, from whose solid atmosphere black rain and fire and hail will burst. Oh, here. So you're probably starting to notice a trend. These first two stanzas have both, well, sorry, these first two parts of Ode to the West Wind have both ended with the phrase, Oh, here. So in both instances, the poet ends pleading with the West Wind, with this thing that it's personifying, that he is personifying, rather. I, I, I'm always go back and forth in my, in my imagination on this, wondering, is the poet afraid of the West Wind? and begging it to to stop? Is it trying to sort of stem the tide of nature to keep winter, to keep autumn from coming, to keep the beauty of summer from fading away? Is it perhaps simply trying to have a conversation to, is this the, the poet trying to engage with it, to, to understand it? But what we're definitely getting here in this second section is a sort of, Fearfulness. There's a lot of description of the effects of the wind. And there's a, there's a word that, that comes up here in the second, um, sorry, the, the first line of the third stanza. And it says, of some fierce minad, even from the dim verge. Um, that word uh, literally means the raving ones. In researching this poem a little bit, I read that in Greek mythology, this is a reference to a female worshiper of Dionysus, or who was known as Bacchus in the Roman, in the Roman mythology, the god of, you know, partying, <laughs> of, of uh, celebrations and, and to some degree drunkenness and things like that. So there's this concept of being drunk to the point of being raving, to, to, of, of madness even. There are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge, so on the surface of the wind, like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce, raving worshiper of the god Bacchus. The locks of the approaching storm. The locks of hair is the, such an interesting image, and I, I've always wondered what he was going for there, and I don't really want to say what I think because I don't want to ruin it for you. I know it sounds like a shortcut, but um, I think it's better. that's a better one to keep thinking about. But what we do get is we get a lot of imagery of domes here, which has a reference to the head, obviously, um, but also to tombs. And we get the concept of the dirge of the dying year. There's this funeral procession of the dying year, which, which is the wind. The wind itself is the funeral procession. And so the, the sort of scary Halloween nature of the first part that we got in part one is not just replicated, but pushed even further here in part two by describing the effect of the wind 
And then we get at the end the uh, the idea that that fire is involved, and that you know fire and hail and tr- and storms. It's not just the wind, but there's what the wind is bringing with it, um, the consequences of the wind's arrival being uh, brought up in this the second part. So here again is uh, part two of Ode to the West Wind by Shelley. Thou on whose stream, mid the steep sky's commotion, loose clouds like earth's decaying leaves are shed, shook from the tangled boughs of heaven and ocean, angels of rain and lightning. There are spread on the blue surface of thine airy surge, like the bright hair uplifted from the head of some fierce minad, even from the dim verge of the horizon to the zenith's height, the locks of the approaching storm. Thou dirge of the dying year, to which this closing night will be the dome of a vast sepulchre, vaulted with all thy congregated might of vapors, from whose solid atmosphere black rain and fire and hail will burst. Oh, hear. This has been the Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with part three of this poem by Shelley.